In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the subject of fenatory gap. What is a fenatory gap? It can sometimes cause a bit of shock in people when they get diagnosed with a fenatory gap. But actually, all it means is that the vocal cords aren't meeting properly. So there's a gap when people are talking. There are lots of different causes. For example, if you have nodules or swellings on the vocal cords, because the cords won't meet exactly, because that little bump will be stopping them meeting, that will cause a fenatory gap. To fenate means to voice. And if you have a fenatory gap, it will cause a little bit of an impedance on the vocal signal so that the voice will not sound completely smooth. It very often will sound breathy or husky, sometimes croaky, sometimes very croaky because if the vocal cords don't meet, you're having air escape all the time. And sometimes because they're not meeting properly, other muscles around the vocal cords are also being recruited that maybe are working harder than they should or shouldn't be really involved too much in voicing. So it can distort the voice quite a lot. Other reasons for people having phonatory gaps are maybe paralyzed vocal cords or weak vocal cords because the fact that one doesn't move as well means they don't often make contact. That also leads to a weaker voice sound and over time the voice gets more tired, it causes voice fatigue. Another cause for a phonatory gap might be muscle tension dysphonia because the vocal cords will not be meeting in their normal way sometimes when there's a lot of strain attached. And funnily enough, when people are trying to protect their voice, perhaps after a surgery or after a cold or a flu or laryngitis, that's one of the times when a phonatory gap can creep in. So recently I've seen many people where that's been the case after colds and flu or just not being very well. While the cold and flu does move off, the voice doesn't really recover that well. And that's often because they're left with this venatory gap. Now, sometimes when we try and protect our voice by perhaps underusing it a little bit or conserving it back a little bit, the voice doesn't really respond to that very well, especially over time, because voices are quite a dynamic um, phenomenon. It needs to vibrate and then leave the body. And if we're constantly holding it back like this, it causes a phonatory gap. Whilst people think they're trying to preserve their voice that way, I often have to tell them just to get that voice voicing again and to start using the voice rather than just not using it and holding it back too much. Another reason people might have a phonatory gap is perhaps post-surgery when they've had an intubation that's gone through the vocal cords, because that's obviously how they, they get us to breathe when we're under a general anaesthetic. But if it's a long operation, for example, or it ha they had to use a wider tube, just the fact that the vocal cords are pushed apart for long periods of time sometimes leaves a bit of a legacy. And one of those things can be a phenatory gap. Another thing that can cause a phenatory gap is a post-surgical reaction. Often when we've had a surgery and we've been under general anaesthetic, the tube that they put between the vocal cords to allow us to breathe can sometimes end up being there for quite a long time, especially in long or serious surgeries. And so the cords being pushed apart for a significant length of time sometimes leaves a legacy afterwards of the cords being a bit not used, moving in their usual way. So that will leave us with um, a breathy voice sometimes. So the symptoms will be a breathy voice, perhaps a creaky voice or a croaky voice, a voice that gets tired. And another big um, fallout from a phonatory gap is that the voice won't project well because the cords need to meet well to make a strong voice and particularly to make a loud voice. If I have a voice the way the vocal cords don't meet very well like this, it doesn't matter how much I try and push the voice, I'll just be pushing more air. Um, so that will not allow you to get loud. When people receive a diagnosis of a phonatory gap, sometimes it freaks them out because it sounds like it might be like super serious. And whilst it's not ideal to have a phonatory gap when we talk, it's something that's definitely curable. In terms of therapy in most cases, now if it's a vocal cord paralysis, that's often a combination of, of therapy and possibly surgery, which will restore the voice to, a, to sometimes 90% or at least 80%. But if it's just a phonatory gap where there hasn't been a paralysis of a vocal cord or a really strong weakness of a vocal cord, then the indications for the voice getting better are very strong, but it will take some therapy and a, and a kind of relearning of a pattern to help the closing of the vocal cords. When we voice, the vocal cords vibrate together very fast, too really fast to see with just your eye, but under a strobe, you can see that the vocal cords wave and, and make contact together. And if they're not making contact together as much as they should do, we're losing air and that will cause a phonatory gap. So a lot of the treatment will center around exercises that encourage the vocal cords to close. 
Now, lots of different exercises can do that. So therapists use different approaches. Um, sometimes just a simple harm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a way of getting the voice going. But if the voice is straining and the hum is not clear and it goes mm -hmm. like that, then that exercise wouldn't be suitable for that person. And part of the therapist's skill is to work with exercises that work for that particular person. Whereas a humming technique might work for somebody, it might not work at all for somebody else. So there are exercises that can bring the vocal cords together using vowels, for example. So if we say A, it should have quite a crisp sound. But if it comes out A, which is quite common on a phonatory gap to have that creaky sound, or A, like a more husky sound, then we have to work to achieve that smooth sound. And once those vowels can be said in quite a smooth voice without strain, that's the beginning of the pattern starting to come back in a more normal way and to encourage the closure. People often ask me how long it will take to eliminate the phonatory gap. It's very individual. So some people will just do really well with just a couple of sessions and some people will need a bit more. It depends how long it's been there and, and if there's what other things are in play with the voice sometimes. Sometimes singers might develop a bit of a phonatory gap as well because the technique they've used or perhaps overuse of the voice has, has made the function a little bit out of kilter. So it really depends on what your voice use is like. And with all therapy, I always try to cover the more difficult things towards the end. Once the vocal cords are moving better, then building stamina up, and of course, then learning how to project the voice safely without damaging it. And of course, to do that, you need to have vocal cords that meet in the middle. If you found the contents of this video helpful, press the like button and subscribe to the channel.